play every game anymore. I gotta pick the games that this I This is buy. why they have to send the games to us. So that way we can still give our honest reviews. So these companies need to see our podcast and give us these games for free. Shameless plug, dude. All right, welcome to the Geek Branch Podcast. I'm your host, Tim. These are my co-hosts, Dane and Devante. Uh, as I said uh, in the first episode of the week, unfortunately, Matt will be gone for the rest of the month. Uh, we uh, miss him dearly. He is a pillar to this group. He might not think so, but he is most definitely an important piece to the Geek Branch. Um, so with that, uh, in remembrance of him, uh, with him being gone for the next month, uh, we're going to focus on PlayStation and the new PlayStation five stuff that's going on. There's been a lot of restructuring going on with the company and a lot of people have been concerned. So with that, um, they're basically their president, uh, or, well, not president, but, um, CEO, PlayStation CEO, not Sony CEO, uh, Jim Ryan uh, spoke uh, recently uh, to uh, Game Industry Biz to kind of clear the air to let people know that what's been going on is for the betterment of the company. Uh, so what's exactly been going on is that, as we know, PlayStation has always been more of a region-based uh, uh, company, whereas they'll focus, what I mean by that is they'll focus on um Japan, but they're, they have Japan markets and the, so they'll have people that will make sure they cater to Japan and they have people that cater to the European market and people that of course cater to the U S market. What they're changing to now is they are making it a global uh, focus. So instead of them trying to split up their efforts three ways, anything they make will be made for all three of the uh, focused groups. And so they won't have where they have one, uh, because, you know, these companies have meetings. Yeah, meetings yeah. have meetings. So instead of them having to have these... Uh, Otakus rejoice. Yes. So instead <laughs> of having all these ridiculous amount of meetings, they all have one big meeting, and they don't have to worry about disagreeing on something after something's already been in the pipeline for a while. So it really helps clean things up over at PlayStation. Uh, a, a good example of when why this is a good thing is Nintendo. Nintendo of America and Nintendo of Japan <clears throat> sometimes have a lot of disconnect. So like with the uh, Nintendo Switch with its online uh, party chat stuff, Nintendo of America really has a tough time trying to explain why that's okay. Uh, in Japan, it's a different culture over there and so the, the the workers are old school and they don't understand why it's a dumb idea to have their chat system on a cell phone. So... Uh, there's a lot of disconnect. So now Sony doesn't have to worry about that because now they're globalized. So I think that's really good. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. No more region locked games. Yeah. No more region locked games. <laughs> that's that's why a lot of people are happy. Yes, that's why a lot of people are happy. I just hope it doesn't mean that they don't forget about uh, their Japanese uh, influence. Yeah. First things first, man. Go ahead and drop Ghost of Tsushima, man. Stop playing. Bro, every episode. The media campaign is in full effect for holiday season, and y'all are posting ads of Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima, which don't come out till the middle of next year. And he does have a point. Are you serious? They have nothing to show right now because they have well, so much that they're preparing for with PlayStation well, 5. Well, hold up now. We got to recall that regardless of delays, they already paid for the advertising. Yes. <laughs> so it's coming regardless of what yes. you say. Yes. They're not wasting their money. Unfortunate. Yeah. No, they have really. nothing else to show. Uh, they did admit, and it probably uh, has a big part to do with Xbox, they are looking at uh, buying more studios. They just want to make sure that it's a studio that works well with the PlayStation ecosystem, which whatever that means. I mean, well, a studio is a studio. When you, when you say studio, you mean gaming production studio? Yeah, to make more exclusives. Are they looking for first party? Yeah, first studios. party studios, just like uh, Xbox did, where they bought a whole bunch of companies. Mm. They're uh, looking at doing that. Y'all can't even push y'all games out. That's why they need more studios. What are y'all doing? 
That's why they need more studios. So that'll well, no. See, that's so that's, why they have more games they can delay. No, no, no. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's what you're asking for. Because what they should be doing is expanding. And you like say Obsidian, where they have a good track record on their release time and make good quality okay. games. But like that's not fixing the problem. That's like you yeah, but they have more content for their system while they're waiting on the other game that's delayed. All right, let me let me tell you exactly what that comes out to look like though. That looks like somebody cut off your leg, and the way it was fixed is that you grew another arm. <laughs> the other arm's super useful and really cool, but you're still missing your leg. They're not fixing lying. the problem. <laughs> he is not lying. Yeah. Sony got the big head right now. They do have a big head, but they. PS4 did so good. I guess they're prepping for PS5. Uh, they said that they are trying to make the smoothest transition from PS4 to PS5, from one console to another that's uh -huh. ever been before uh, yeah, from one generation. Games. No, no, you say that. But that's they're... why they're going to have so many games on the PlayStation 5. No, you say that, but they're going to end up like the Switch. How about you want to bet? <laughs> when the Switch dropped, the, the, the gaming library for the Switch was pitifully small. I bet you anything, there is a lot of games ready for the PlayStation 5. Because, That's what they said about PS4, Tim. But the PS3 was still getting a slew Wait, of what did games. We, get? we got Battlefield 4, Killzone, and... Oh, dude, no. Yeah, Killzone. What else? Uh, Speaking <laughs> of that... The puzzle game with the the the, the thing, the golem. It was I forgot so, that. Yeah, it was so uh, You're talking about Mac. Yeah. Knack 2, baby. Yeah, it was look. like four games. Yes, it was. The one that I bought was Killzone. Game, game of the year, Knack 2, baby. It's a PS5. Already Sorry, rumored to video have game donkey five reference. launch titles. <laughs> I'm, I'm not... Xbox did the same thing. I'm not too enthused, man. Okay, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't, don't be covering for PlayStation by bringing up how pitiful Xbox is. <laughs> That's not, that doesn't work. We're, we're talking about their problems. Xbox is learning. And they, they, uh, but PlayStation uh, is ramping up a lot of games to get ready for the PlayStation 5. Um, they uh, recently um, they said that Guerrilla Games is going to have a game that is going to be ready for launch. And it's not Horizon Zero Dawn 2, which... Can't wait for that. It's pretty well been confirmed because of a recent job posting. They pretty much admit it. They are working on a new Horizon Zero Dawn. That's obvious. But they also believe that they are going to, and it's not Killzone. It's actually their first big shooter that they used to make for PlayStation, SOCOM. They think that they're going to have a, a SOCOM game ready for launch. Man, nobody remembers SOCOM. I remember SOCOM, but, but I only us. remember SOCOM because I remember when they tried to say it was going to be like, the the Call of Duty killer. Yes, yes. <laughs> My God. My God. No, but it was great at the time. I don't want uh I don't want SOCOM. I want Mag. That was my game. That was a fantastic online because it was during the PlayStation 3 era and it was one of the only games where you had 50 versus 50. Yeah. That was a rare the thing battle to see. lobby was insanely yes. huge. And I was always the medic, and they would always get mad because you had a, a gun where you can go run up to people and heal them with just the gun. And they would get mad because I'd be in first place because all I would do is go revive my <laughs> teammates and go heal people. You got points for using the heal. Yeah. Yes. Sony put themselves in a bad spot, like for one, because Acquiring more studios to make more games, how do you spread that out throughout the year? How do you schedule all these big title games that you plan to launch? Well, hey, hey, the they want more they no. want more games well, hold on one second. throughout the, the year, the, like Nintendo does. The administrative bureaucracy that is required to start officiating that just got freed up. Yeah, so that's so, why so they're globalizing. That. Yeah, because normally their bureaucracy, the way it currently worked between the regional locked studio, or sorry, the regional control made it nearly impossible to coordinate that. Because they had to be approved amongst all three regions. Yeah, and then go to the very top. So it's it's now it's cleaned that, up now. Yeah. That there's a there's a freedom that can be spent towards that. I still don't think it's the right direction, but that that flaw That's has why been the CEO has been firing well, they haven't said he fired people. But that's why there's a lot of new people in new positions and a lot of people out of jobs. Restructuring. Yes, restructuring big time. But uh, as it goes, so yes, Sony's cleared that conundrum out of the way. I still don't think they're going in the right direction with the purchasing of new studios rather than just expanding the current ones that they have. Right. I, I would love for them to go the direction that Xbox is going and realize that you don't have to confine your company to a console. You can also have a service. I mean, they have PlayStation now, but they're not committing to it like Xbox is. Look, games as a service... 
I am not approving of. I'm not saying games as a service. I'm saying like how Xbox Game Pass works, where you can play their games on an Xbox or on a PC, and if you own a PC and you want to play your third-party games on your PC, you can do that without having to worry about buying another console and you can still enjoy first party games from that said company. Yes. And that said company is still making the same profits that they would if they, if a person bought their console. Yes. So that I can get behind. Yes. That is the death of exclusivity. Yes. It would, it would do away with exclusivity. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. That's We're, what I want. That's the future I want. Yeah. I want, I want PS5 games to be cheaper than PS4. That's games not happening. Were. Not happening. Like, I'm from no. the generation of greatest hits. If you don't know what greatest hits is, twenty dollars watching this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> but look, we need those games to be cheaper. I would you buy DLC Nintendo, more if you, games were. I mean, I know we priced. weren't around during those days, but the NES games were like eighty dollars. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying. Well, at that point, it was cutting edge <clears throat> technology. Yeah. So we gotta, you gotta, you gotta like go back into context here. We we start to hit mass production right around the PS2 era, where we could literally see them make. 20 yeah. million games in a single run. So what I could see them doing is making the digital versions cheaper now. Well, because look, because the type of disc they'll be using for the PS5 and the Xbox One, at, uh, Xbox Scarlet. It's already okay. like that but, with but, the sales they have every week. Yeah. No, but let's, let's hold up for just a second here, right? We all dream of a new gaming market as far as price fluctuation goes. Right. Where we buy our AAA it's not gonna, titles. It's not going to change from I, 60. I, no, 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 no. Well, what I'm saying, we all dream that we get our AAA titles at 40 and then the Battle Pass as Season Pass right. is an additional $40, but it's three guaranteed expansions. Right. That's that's the universal gamer dream at this point as far as pricing range goes. We're not going to get back to greatest hits. That's not happening. Well, but, every once in a while you get the $20 games. It's it's a rare thing, but Sony actually still does it. Well, yeah. If they drop the 50, I'd be happy. <laughs> on on a regular basis, yeah. it's 50. But, but DLC let's, is 15 to $20. I just don't foresee them buying. doing it. I mean, PC they do that a lot. Oh well, no, PC is a completely different ball game though. Don't, don't, don't. But they say that because of the solid state drive, it is cheaper for the devs to produce games for, uh, for PlayStation at least. I would assume that uh, Xbox is going to have a solid state drive as well. Look, my thing is right. No matter what, it's just that gaming as an entire industry has become too profit focused yes. rather than you know production focused. So regardless, I don't think prices are ever going to drop. In fact, they might increase because we're looking currently at a future where we might be seeing $60 games, but $80 expansion packs. We're, we're, we're hitting, we're, we're really close to that, dude. How many season passes right now are $39.99? But season passes are starting to go away. But regardless, well, they're, PC. But, but they're, yeah, yeah. But they're getting replaced by something. Yeah, that battle pass systems is, and stuff is like that. Arguably going to increase in a loop. The loot boxes are are fading away thanks to all of its controversy. So you're right; they're going to have to find some other way to charge us a whole bunch of money. Right, and I'm saying that that new thing, some total, probably is going to be looking at about eighty dollars. So your full gaming experience <laughs> is probably going to be 140 bucks rather than the hundred and twenty like, that it is currently. Because like even Call of Duty games, they don't do the whole expansion pass stuff anymore. They don't right. do the loot boxes. Loot. They do battle pass now. Yeah, but Call, Call of Duty, you're getting all the game, uh, the maps now without having to buy a, a season passes. pass. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to buy a season pass now. But that's because of all the backlash all these companies have been having over those kind of things. Oh, yeah, most def. Real deserved backlash at that. Oh, I agree. I mean, yeah. But it, then those games that are going to add battle passes, they're going to make those battle passes probably like 20 bucks a season. Yeah. So all, all I'm saying is that in between pre-orders... The base content, DLC, passes, and expansion orders, uh, uh, not even counting cosmetics. We're looking at, for the full gaming experience, approaching $160. It's getting yep. it's getting unreasonable, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what we want it to do, we want it to drop down the full experience. I, to get the Green full experience, is, yeah, 80 bucks would be perfect. Uh, yeah. I can't buy every game anymore. I got to pick the games that this I This is buy. why they have to send the games to us. So that way we can still give our honest reviews. So these companies need to see our podcast and give <laughs> us these games for free. Shameless plug, dude. I'm sorry. Shameless plug. I'm sorry, but I'm just saying, hey. Yeah, look, I, I don't really appreciate you making shills of us all. 
you can chill on your own time. <laughs> because I, I don't care. I'm going to buy the game, play it, and review it regardless. I mean, I would never personally, and I know none of y'all would either, if if they, if they it was under the intention of if they were to give me that game and they expect me to give them a positive review. Regardless of what the content of the game yeah, is. Yeah, I would never agree to giving uh, taking their game. I know, Tim. We're, yeah. we're all we're all moral, principled people. Yes. I just, I'm, I'm joshing you. <laughs> but you were shilling a little bit there. I was a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, it's okay. Um, But uh, I have to agree. I don't, I don't think they're going to go down on prices with that stuff. No, I think it's only going to increase. But it's an interesting, uh, I forgot who it was, but somebody uh, that's in charge of the, some of the important stuff that deals with PlayStation said that we may be surprised at the price of uh, the PS5, that we, they have to get the price right, that it's very important. So that way people well, will buy surprise, it. Wait, wait, surprised by the price of the new console? In are, a good are, way. Are you saying that we're going to be looking at like a $300 console? No, 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 no. $300. No, it would be more close I, to $400, $500. Oh, oh, oh. But see, that would have surprised me. <laughs> what they mean is, okay, so what the specs that we know of it now, that console, if you were to build it for PC, would be out $1,000 at least. But it's a console regardless. It doesn't right. do all the things the PC does. So right. cut it in so, half, $500. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So they're, well, they're saying, a lot of people are thinking, because he said that, because most of us think it's going to be $500 because it's a console, they're thinking they're going to try to go the PlayStation 4 route again and make it $400. Mm-mm. You don't think so? I don't think they'll make enough money back off of that. But they've always sold well, their you, consoles at a loss, unlike Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, you could totally sell it at a loss as long as you get a sufficient enough volume. Yeah. Because the volume is what matters more than just pure profit off of the console sale. And the time of the year that they're selling their console is going to be the essentially during uh, its holiday season. So it's going to be during Black Friday. It's going to be during well, I mean, they always, Christmas time. They always aim for that just yeah, because. Unless you're Nintendo. Colors? Do we get colors? That's his That's his big thing. He no, is, man. He, he wants uh, colors really bad. what's going to push it. But you yeah. know for a fact that you're going to get, like, black. I don't want black. I would take PS1 gray again. Gray, I, really? I'm just, I don't want black. I want white I, or gray. No, but I'm telling you, though, that you know that the thing they're going to put out on day one is it's just black. black. Yeah, and that's what me and Matt <laughs> yeah. keep telling him. We're like, oh, just bro, accept yeah. it. Just accept it. Prime, he won't accept example, it. For example, Nintendo 64. They push that out in like eight, nine colors. Yeah, because People that's Nintendo. Like four of them just to have more colors. That's that's Nintendo though. Like Nintendo <laughs> gets it. I want colors. Sony hasn't gotten the memo. Morbid ass brick. <laughs> it would be cool to choose the primary colors. It yeah. would it would be pretty neat. Yeah, but we're we're dreaming though. Let's let's be honest. Um, Please give us one color scheme. <laughs> so there's also <laughs> some more interesting stuff going on with uh, Nintendo, uh, not Nintendo, uh, PlayStation. Uh, Let's go digital. They're the ones that did the uh, rendering for uh, the PlayStation Five. <laughs> Uh, is, that a, is that a save cartridge? <laughs> they bring in memory cards back. Uh, no, what? Are a, you serious? No, they think that they're making a cartridge because there was a patent, and it was the same patent that they found uh, when they found the uh, design for the PlayStation 5 um, dev kit. And so uh, they think it is actually going to be for a uh, mobile console. Two. Tell me that don't look like no a memory card. memory card. Yes, it does. It, it looks like a memory to, I mean, a, a memory card to a, a PlayStation 2 for sure. So Think about they, it. They're pushing out these large games. They're giving us a small hard drive in these systems. One they, terabyte. They're going to sell us a memory card for $100. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that um, it doesn't make sense that they would go that route because they're going towards these blu-ray discs that can hunt, uh, can hold 100 gigabytes okay but most games are approaching 60 gigabytes to begin with yeah so well, why would COD they 120 the new cod is not 120 it's not no i think the largest game period i want to say it's like 80 yeah it's 83 i think was 83. no 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 there's some in the hundreds no, I'm talking about just as a standalone single game. Yeah. If you, if you talk about combined games, then you easily go over 100. No, I'm saying there are games, but, you know, they don't really count because they're um, games like, you know, World of Warcraft and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's that's too much content. That's for like six expansions. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? It's talking about single content. Yeah. Like Red Dead Redemption counts as single content. I think it was uh, over 80. Yeah, but that was just because of the pure, like, 
Destiny should be up there. Destiny is up there, but it's not that high. That's also including expansions, though. Yeah, it's not that high. Yeah, we're just talking about just like single content. Anyways, cards, man. So yeah, those it cartridges. Like a freaking memory card. It does look like a memory card, and they could be trying to hit a nostalgia bone, and they could be trying to make a mobile console that, and their little cartridges look like the old PlayStation Two memory cards. They could be going that route. Could be. Yeah. Would I get baited into it? No. The but. only way I'd be okay with it is if it was where I can play games from the PlayStation 5 on that system and I don't have to buy it twice. If I can buy it digitally for the PlayStation 5 and I can play it over on this new console, I'd be down for it. Memory cards. Yeah, where it's like remote play, except for it actually works properly. Yeah. Sounds like a gimmick, but okay. <laughs> well, you know PlayStation's going to try to go after that gimmick after how well Nintendo yeah. did. You would think they would have learned their lesson. I mean, Nintendo proved their point twice to them. Well, the Nintendo I mean, the PSP is, was a, a fantastic uh, handheld. Yeah, but I mean, the whole point, though, is that, yeah, Sony is always, like, one step behind Nintendo, and Nintendo's entire market is half a gimmick, so it is what it is. And then PlayStation always tries to... Um, when they make mobile consoles, they're always kind of a, they're overpriced to a lot of people. So they don't want to buy them. Vitas. Yeah, the Vitas were really expensive to people. I bought it at launch, but you must be blind. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a terrible example. I, <laughs> I buy everything. Flex, but okay. <laughs> I got a lot of weird flexes tonight. <laughs> um, but uh, with, if PlayStation tries to essentially sell a mobile handheld device that, is supposed to be more powerful than the Nintendo Switch. What price would they be going for them? Because the now that's going to be three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. It would have to be three hundred dollars. That's the only way they could compete with them. No, I'm just pointing it out though. That that's the one that definitively is going to yeah. be about two ninety nine ninety nine. I can just see it now because they're willing to sell it at a loss, yeah. whereas Nintendo's not. Yeah, but people understand that Nintendo's the king of handheld. So Man, just push all games out. Y'all doing too much. That, that's the point right there. Yeah, they have their that hands in too many things the because they also got PlayStation VR. No, no, because this right here is what we call diversifying in the wrong way. Yeah. Because they're constantly focused on producing the base product and yeah. nothing for the product itself. So we're going to get, like, no doubt in the next three years, we're going to get three variation consoles, including right. the PS5, from Sony. And when we get done looking at the gaming roster, it's going to be under 300 games. They already we'll admitted get a, the pro version coming out on launch. That's too. what I'm saying. We get the PS5, we get the uh, PSVR2, and we'll probably get I don't the know. Robert Mobile. Yeah, the PlayStation. I don't know what they'll call the mobile one, but but you get my point. The, We're gonna get three additional off like consoles, but I'm telling you that amongst all of those games, they're PPS, you get, they're uh, PlayStation Portable Switch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but regardless, <laughs> will you get done with it all? Right. <laughs> <laughs> when you get done with it, oh, their gaming library is going to be microscopic. I'm going to have yeah. eight games. <laughs> if they try to copy <laughs> off of Nintendo, though, are they going to try to go the Joy-Con route, or are they going to make it totally, like, handheld Nintendo Switch well, Lite route, look, I would let's, assume? Let's, let's think about it. Can they innovate? No. No. <laughs> they, cop- they copy. That's literally in, what they do. In the age of cell phones, where we're at right now, there's no need for a mobile console. It don't, uh, Nintendo was the only one that could pull it off. Yeah, because, because it's, it's Nintendo, Nintendo. It's a gimmick. That's the whole point. Look, We're the masters of, of selling. Symmetry. Yeah, of selling you a gimmick. I'm, t- <laughs> I, but I love the Switch. Like uh, I was playing Death Stranding, and we'll, we'll, me and uh, Dane will do a quick impressions on that uh, later. Uh, but when I was playing it, and I had to put it up because me and Stacey I had to go somewhere. I was like, man, I wish I could play this on the Switch while I'm in my car while Stacy's driving. I mean, the Switch. Yeah, sure. It's a bit of a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that works. Because they specialize in selling gimmicks. That's yes. literally that is Nintendo's claim to flame. Like if 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 Nintendo was the producer of 3D, 3D would be incredibly popular right now. Well, they did make 3DS. Yes. Yeah. That's my point though. Yeah. I was like, if they were the original producer of 3D, we wouldn't have even thought about 3D as a gimmick. They would yeah. have sold it down the road to us. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they specialize in it, dude. They know how they, they're good at their craft. You know? <laughs> hey, hey, when they started out, it wasn't about that stuff. <laughs> Let's not forget to, the to Nintendo and the Super Nintendo days. Yeah. Nintendo yeah. and Sony used to be one. Uh yeah. no. 
they partnered with each other and it and point, didn't work yeah. out. You see who's winning. Uh Nintendo. Actually, uh well, hold on. Someone let's, 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 let's hold up here. They're, Sony they're, makes they're more doing, money. Yeah, they're doing re- both really good right now. It's the Xbox that's kind of <laughs> yeah. the loser right N- now. N- Nintendo's more reputable. Yeah. Sony makes more money. Uh, and then Nintendo's got a lot more money in the bank. Yes, because Sony keeps diversifying. Yeah, whereas S- Nintendo knows what they're good at, and they don't have to keep diversifying. Yeah. That's, that's one of the bigger differences between those two companies. Sony's got their hands on a lot of different things. Luckily, they don't do like laptops and stuff anymore they still do cell phones Ooh. no one Ooh. buys their cell phones but Those they still laptops? do it oh my god i had one that was a big mistake the what was it sony vio yeah vio yeah uh, another company has it now and they make them for like almost two thousand dollars wait it still exists yeah they yeah. still exist the it's brand but, but it's anymore. not called sony anymore it's just vio That's yeah i dumb. mean when you when you diversify and you put all that much money into production and you know it has to go somewhere. It doesn't just disappear. I did own one of their phones that lasted for a good minute. Oh, their yeah. phones are durable. Phones are clutch. Bro. Yeah. Well, first off, things coming out of Japan are made with Nokidium. It, it lasts. <laughs> <laughs> it lasts for quite some Man time. Out of Pokemon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> How do you think they came up with the game? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so PlayStation's trying to make some big changes to prepare themselves. For the next gen. We've seen that with Xbox too. They've been making big changes. One company is trying to make changes. To uh, allow um, it to be their uh, product to be more accessible. Another one is trying to. I guess you could say. Ramp up uh, exclusivity. uh, To where you want to pick them. They're not really trying to give you choices. They want to make sure you pick them. Which is PlayStation. They want to try to make that evident. That's why I think, I know you're complaining about them not having any games right now. I really think that they're going to have a strong, I think it'll be one of their strongest launch lineups because PlayStation has not had a strong launch lineup in a long time. I don't see it. Okay. They have one additional see, game you, you're one of those PS4 launch. You're one of those guys that is like, all right, cool. I know who's going to win the Super Bowl this year because they haven't won in 15 years. You're one of those people. No. Stop. No, that's exactly they, what you- they won the PlayStation 4. I mean, between Xbox and PlayStation. No, no, but I'm talking about game launches. Not, not, not about that as a company. That's not why I think that. Okay. The reason why I think that is because I've seen plenty of uh, insiders talk about them prepping for a lot of games. Uh, they said that the that the company for uh, Gorilla Games, they're going to have uh, that supposed SOCOM game. Uh, the uh, I think it's called Bluepoint. Uh, the people who uh, remade Shadow Colossus, they have a game ready for launch. Um, they said Asomniac's going to have a game ready for launch. They, there's so many companies that they have lined up ready for PlayStation 5. When they say launch, is that launch day or launch schedule? Launch day. Mm. The games that I think they'll have is they'll probably, I know they said SOCOM, but I think it'll probably end up being Killzone. It's always ended up being Killzone. Kill zone. Um, is Killzone five at this point, or is it four? Five. It's five. Yeah. Okay. I think it's five. Because it, it wasn't. Was the last one five? No, last one was four, wasn't it? Last one. Killzone four. Because the one that launched with the three was either three or four. So I'm trying to remember. Shadowfall was five. I think I'm not sure. No. Uh, no, Killzone four was uh, Shadowfall. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So kill zone five is what we're at. So what I think they'll make is um, a new kill zone. They'll uh, they'll have uh, God of War ready. They'll have Spider Man. Uh, you think they'll have God of War ready for launch on PS Five? I think that they'll have it ready for launch season. Okay. I think that they'll have uh, Spider Man ready for launch season. Uh, I think that they'll have Horizon Zero Dawn ready for launch season. Uh, then as far as launch games. Uh, the kill zone, uh, then um, maybe an infamous game as a surprise. Hell no. You don't think so? They ain't even got Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> you don't know what they have behind the scenes. <laughs> listen, listen, they, listen. They're working on one game Tim, at a time. You're I being way too that. optimistic. If they launch with 10 actual titles, who going to buy all 10 games? Somebody what, taking a loss. I know, right. That's, dude, I, I swear they're not going to do it. If they, hit, if they hit 10 or above, I would literally flip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that there, there will be a Dark Souls uh, remaster, not Dark Souls, but Demon Souls remaster. 
I do. You listen for two months. Dude. Yeah, I mean, you selling me the dream. I That's love Demon Christmas Souls. List. Yeah, I know, right? Like, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably a new, um, what's it, Gran Turismo? New Gran Turismo game. That's believable. Yeah, yeah. there's always should be at least one racing game, either yeah. Forza or Gran Turismo. Uh, I think Dream. they'll try to co- surprise people, and I don't know if it'll be on launch, but I think that they'll try to come out with a new Smash-like competitor, their All-Stars nope. game. I don't see it. Okay. All right. I mean, look, if Tim calls it, Tim calls it, but we're, we're thinking that you're a little bit too optimistic. We might here. get Street Fighter Six. Uh, Street Four Fighter 6. Characters. Yeah, Street Fighter 6. <laughs> with, with the prepared 60 character passes. Yes. Um, character bundles. Five characters for $40. I it's can see a lot of third-party games being announced, like a new Marvel vs. Capcom game, because they're they trying to redeem a, that. A competitor for uh, for Halo. Because that's going to be, be a Killzone. big seller for... for be no, cool. no, Killzone, Killzone does not does compete not with Halo. Halo. They've always tried to make it compete with Halo, though. They've always thought it's a Halo... Com- Competitor. It's not, but they think it is. I mean, they're, I mean, spy, uh, they're in some deep delusion. <laughs> um, I think I, I be, like Killzone. There will be some stuff that we'll be surprised that they have. Last of Us 2 will be there at launch. Uh, Ghost of Shima will be there at launch. It better be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure there will be a couple of other remasters like All that. All those games we saw at E3, I've heard nothing about. There was the game by um, the people that did, uh, what was it? The Square Enix company that no, no, it was Capcom. It was the Capcom game you were the, thinking about. The people that did the um the game with the superpowers. I forgot the name of it. I mean Infamous, Infamous? is the only one I can no, think no, no, of. No, 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 no. When Which you is Sucker like Punch. Rewind time, stop time. Uh um, stop time. Are you talking about uh Quantum? Quantum break? No. No, 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 no. I forgot the name of it. Can you think of an E3 game with superpowers? I'm sorry, you, you're killing me here. What, what are we talking about? I need to know. I don't Dude, know. With the um, with the mask, the um, what's the name of that game? With the mask superpowers. I don't know. You got me, man. You'll Dishonored. Come, Dishonored. Dishon- oh, well, that's this not Dishonored? superpowers. That's more supernatural. Uh, they had a, a trailer for a game, which. Basically, you know, special powers. Blah, I know blah, what blah. you're talking about, and you can read. Yeah, but that was a Bethesda thing, so Ugh. they'll probably, Ugh. you know, it was a lot of games we don't know remember. what happened to yeah. after E3. They yeah, just showed us some stuff. Well, I mean, first off, E3 is generally speaking a crap show to begin with. Let's, yeah. let's be honest here. Um, Look at Xbox as E3. Ugh. <laughs> but proceed. Yeah, Microsoft, you gotta do better. Maybe next year. Microsoft has Halo, and that's. That's it. That's it. That's all you can say. <laughs> and Gears of War. That's all you can say, Tim. Yeah, I mean that's that's I mean, Gears that's of War, just the facts, man. Gears Five was really good, with the exception of like some of the changes they did to the weapons. I was not. I'm not in the approval zone for like the redundancy as well as like the nerfing of some of the weapons. That's just me though. I, I care more about that than anything else. I can't believe it took me that long to remember the name of the game. Yeah, Dishonored. I'm sorry, you were so far off. If you had yeah. literally said controlling rats, I would have got it immediately. Yeah, but, I would have gotten like, that too. Time, like the time. Well, powers. he was talking about the other. He was talking about the other game. It dealt with time and stuff like that. Yeah, the one that he was trying to think of. Yeah, but say just the people who are making. Uh, so they think that Starfield will be a, a launch game. The Bethesda. Ugh. One. Is Look, that the one you got? Grand Theft Auto Six. Wait, Grand Theft Auto 6 launch day or launch season? Because there's no way in the world. It's launch be. season. Okay, yeah. There's no way in the world it's ever going to be launch day. You know, like When you say launch season, that's like six months after launch, right? Yeah, I know that. That's why I think that the, we'll get both God of War and uh, Spider-Man during the launch season. We could very, very well get God of War 2 at the launch date. I don't know. You'll be shocked. They've been working on it since You'll they stopped the other. You'll be shocked, Tim. Am I... Am I... My bar is not set that high. Right. I think that we're leaning towards disappointment and we're going to be correct. <laughs> I'm looking for five games and two of those are going to be They remasters. have been extremely, extremely uh, secretive about what is going to be coming to the PlayStation 5. Because they ain't got it. <laughs> <laughs> but they also haven't came out with any games for the PlayStation 4 in like a while. they ain't got it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I really think Sony they have some spent, stuff lined up. Sony has spent all of its money developing... 
consoles they, and core products. They're not making games. I'm going to have y'all they, eat they, y'all's words they in put February. They in a position where they're like, we're going we're gonna to drop another console. And developers are like, okay, <laughs> so can we develop on PS4 or should we develop for PS5? And they're like, develop for PS5. And they're like, what about PS4? And I was like, it's coming out next year. Who cares? Yeah. Let, let it die. So there's going to be a whole, because they're not like Nintendo where they try to keep their consoles alive forever. And uh, I'm telling you, I think it's going to have a strong lineup. Okay. Okay. We'll and see. then y'all are going to be like, man, Tim was right. What do you know? The weekend after launch. We you don't we, know. You're going to hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, have a discussion about it. But I think this is a good stopping point just for right now um, with the PlayStation news. Uh, if we find anything else more about uh, what's going on with the PlayStation 5, we'll make sure to let you know first. Thank you for listening and subscribing. Thanks, guys.